Hey, this is Jake from Mido. Thanks for checking out the tool. I want to show you some new functionality that we have and kind of a rundown of everything you can do in Mido. So for those who don't know, Mido is a spreadsheet interface for Python. And what that means is you can call this spreadsheet into your Python environment and every edit you make in Mido is going to generate the equivalent code in the code cell below. So if I make a pivot table in here, it's going to generate the code for pivot down here, which we'll see in a second. Uh, to call Mido, all I need to do is install it first using these commands. So python-m pip install mito installer, and then run the uh, install command within the installer. So this command, then this command, if you go to our docs, which you can see up here, you get information on how to install. Now back to mito, I've imported my data set. All I had to do was just click the import button and select from my local files. I can select either CSVs or I can pass in a data frame like this. So I have a data frame farther up in my notebook. I can pass it in as an argument to the mitersheet.g call, and that'll pass in the data frame into the mitersheet, and you'll see it in the sheet here. When I imported my CSV, which was this one, we'll see that it automatically populates the sheet and it turns that CSV into a data frame. So we automatically generate the code for that. Um, now I can go through the operations in the tool. So there's lots of things I can do. The first thing we'll do is just simply add a column. So I have this views column here. I can add a column. And let's say I want to put a formula in here. So I'll use an if statement. And I'll say if this views column, oops, if this views column is greater than 500,000, is that 500,000? Yes. Then we'll turn a one, otherwise return a zero. Oops, put that back. Here we go. So we can see we've created a conditional column here. And when we do that, we generate the code for that here. So the code for getting, generating the new column and the code for that if statement we used. We can also do things like pivoting. So let's say we want to look at, um, let's say we want to look at the average views uh, for different category IDs. So these are different kind of category IDs for YouTube videos. Um, I'm gonna do a pivot table here where we can do category ID and then I wanna look at the average views where the views and I want the average, so mean for each of those. Again, when we make this pivot table, we get the code for the pivot table here. So you don't have to go to Stack Overflow or Google to get the syntax, the code is generated for you. And another thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to sort the category IDs here so I can see uh, which category IDs have the highest, or which have the smallest. Uh, so actually I wanna I want to sort the means here. So I'm gonna to go to this column, I'm gonna click on the column menu and I'm going to sort in descending order so we can see that category 10 has the highest average views for the videos in category 10. And again, we get the sort here. And we see when we made the pivot table, it created a new data frame. Um, that's this data frame here. So I can rename this data frame to, let's say we want to call it pivot table. And the nice thing about the generated code is that this is completely usable uh, forward in my, in my notebook, in my analysis. So if I run this here, I ran the cell, and now I want to call pivot table. We'll see that we get the data frame here. It's sorted and it is the pivot table that we have here. And if I want to turn that back into a Mito sheet, I can just click that and we'll get the pivot table created again. Um, but farther along up here, one thing I can do is I can graph this. So what I'm going to do here is quickly, I'm just going to uh, put a filter on this column. Let's say I only want to look at the categories that are less than 10. So less than 10. We only have two, maybe let's change that to less than 20. There we go, so these are the categories that are less than 20. I'll take that off, that filter, and we see we generate the code for that filter when we do that. And now I can graph this. So I'm gonna hit graph here, I'm gonna make a simple bar chart. The x-axis, I'll put the category ID. The y-axis, I'll put the view means. And then here we go, we can see for the different categories what the average is, what the average views are. And I can copy that graph code as well. And this is Plotly code. And I can put that down here. So we can see we can generate those charts in Plotly like that using the Plotly code. So this code was generated for us. 
And another nice thing we could do, and this is a new feature in Mito. There's actually two new features in Mito that I want to show. So one is that, let me close this. Uh, oops, let me just delete this here. Hold on, sorry about that. Here we go. So what I want to do is one, I want to deduplicate. So we have these different uh, category IDs. So I can actually deduplicate that. Uh, we're going to duplicate the um, category IDs here. And then here we go. Now we've done a deduplicate. We see there are 16 unique category IDs. And I can get rid of that. And if I want to undo that step, we see here's the code for the deduplication. If I want to undo that step, I hit undo. And we see it's gone. And now we're back to the non deduplicated data set. And the last thing I want to show you is that we can format these data sets as well. So let's take the views column. Let's say we want to format that to two decimal places. There we go. We can change that. Or we could change it to four decimal places. Or we could change it to percentages, whatever you want to do. I'll undo that. Now we're back at four decimal places. So we can see we have deduplication and formatting as well for all these different uh, values. We have all these different columns we have. And finally, we can export this analysis. So we can take the state of our data frame and we can export it to a CSV in our Excel file and it'll prepare it for download and we'll be good to go. So yeah, there's a lot you can do in Mito. Definitely added some new functionality recently. Um, you know, lots of data wrangling and data analysis features. We didn't talk about merging as one. You can merge different sheets together. Um, but yeah, hope you get a chance to check out the tool. Again, the install instructions are right here. And uh, thanks so much for watching.